Over the last year, advocacy groups have reported a dramatic rise in domestic violence calls, reaching record levels and greater intensity of abuse reported, placing more significance on the need for safe houses and other spaces where survivors and their families can go to get help while staying safe. Well, now state officials are reporting an uptick in the use of a fairly new program placing domestic violence victims in local hotels instead of shelters. For more, I'm joined by Nicole Morella, Director of Policy and Education at the New Jersey Coalition to End Domestic Violence. Nicole, welcome to the show. I want to ask you first just about this rise in the number of uh, domestic violence survivors reporting. What type of increase are we talking? Yeah, thank you so much, Brianna. Um, so we've seen over the last year, year and a half, domestic violence programming programs responding to nearly four to five times the number of domestic violence survivors and the number of victims coming forward seeking services. Um, we've provided shelter to 53% more victims um, and our hotline numbers, our legal advocacy services, our counseling services are all experiencing a dramatic increase in the number of victims coming forward needing those services. And unfortunately, as we're rounding out 2022, we're seeing that number just has continued to increase over the last year. I mean, we know that the numbers went up post immediately during the pandemic, post pandemic, but are there factors that folks like yourself who work in this space can point to as to why we're seeing such a dramatic rise? Yeah, I think earlier in the pandemic when we had such strong stay at home orders and the need for social distancing and you know, a lot of uh, our systems may have been closed or operating uh, differently than they had before. Um, I think it forced a lot of victims and survivors to stay home, to stay in those abusive relationships mm -hmm. and really to have a lot of, uh, to have limited options. You know, schools were closed, workplaces were from home. And so the access points that victims may have had pre-pandemic were really closed off to them. And so we saw victims staying in those abusive situations much longer. And unfortunately, because of that, that cycle of abuse um, escalated for many survivors, resulting in more severe domestic violence. Mm -hmm. But as we saw the stay at home orders lift, as we see schools and workplaces and other systems and facilities opening back up, we have seen an uh, influx of survivors coming forward and finally feeling like they have the ability and the freedom to seek out the services that they needed over the last several years. Well, so that brings me then to this program where these folks are being placed in area hotels. What does that entail and how does it work? Yeah, so this has been absolutely a critical resource for us during this pandemic. Um, before the pandemic, we most of our domestic violence programs operated in what we would consider a traditional shelter model, where domestic violence victims and their children would be welcomed into a facility or a couple different facilities where we would have the opportunity to provide these wraparound services to them on site. Um, and because of the need to socially distance and provide distancing between families, uh, we were able to utilize this hotel engine program, which essentially is a program, a network of hotels uh, that our domestic violence programs are able to connect with and work with so that when they do have a victim that is in need of safe housing, uh, we can also rely on this network of hotels in addition to the safe houses that are still available um, so that one, we were able to meet the dramatic increase in the number of victims coming forward and needing emergency safe housing and it's also allowed for some flexibility where victims, you know, aren't required to stay in one location within their county or state, um, but maybe have an option to be able to, to be located in a different area of the state. Are there benefits to using a place like a hotel? I'm thinking about security. I'm thinking about, of course, the network of support that survivors need. Yeah, that's a great question. So that was absolutely, I think, one of our initial fears was the security related to it. And we've done a lot of work with the hotels themselves, the hotel engine program, and our supporters at uh, at the Division on Women to make sure that these are safe options. And our advocates absolutely will do a thorough safety plan and assessment with victims to ensure that it is, it is a safe option for them and their children. Um, I think one of the challenges though that we have seen because of the increasing number of survivors needing support 
And because it has moved us away from that traditional model of providing most of our services on site, right. is that domestic violence advocates are needing to provide that ongoing wraparound service, case management, um, ensuring families have access to food, transportation, and all of the other services that they might need while doing so uh, through what we call mobile advocacy. So they're actually meeting with survivors at different locations across their county or over several counties to make sure that they have the support that they need. Um, but as you can imagine, that's really stretching programs to be able to meet those needs in a way that um, is supportive to the families. So if you had, uh, let's say a wish list, which I'm sure that you do, what would groups like yours need then to be able to bring those services and make it so that anyone who needs them gets them? Yeah, so we are definitely using this as an opportunity as a call to action to our governor's office and our state and federal legislators to ensure that our programs have the funding and the support and the resources that they need so that we can provide this mobile advocacy and we can provide the services that families need regardless of where they may be located within their county. And it's also a recognition that we're also working against a housing crisis. I think one of the reasons that we see many victims staying in hotels with their children for sometimes months at a time is because there isn't enough affordable housing available in our state. And so victims are staying in hotels longer while simultaneously our programs continue to take on new survivors that are in need of services. Nicole Morella, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.